Hello, everybody. My name is Frank Reinecke. I'm head of bioinformatics at Resolve Biosciences, and I will walk you through software solutions that help you to get to the ground truth with spatial transcriptomics data. I will quickly explain the data formats that we deal with and talk about two different software solutions that we have set up. And the goal is to explore spatial transcriptomics data with open source tools that we provide easy access to, to visualize the results and to conduct some exploratory analyses. And basically the website helps you to cluster your cells by their expression profile and to visualize the results. So map the cluster identity back to the original position of the cell or region of interest in your sample. A quick introduction to the data types that we deal with. The most important one is the images. During the processing, we generate a huge amount of image data, but most of these images are only transiently used because we decode the identity of the transcript by comparing the fluorescent signals in different images from different rounds. But all these images are basically not necessary for downstream analysis. So to do that, it's most of the time sufficient to use a bright field image and additional stainings like DAPI to detect nuclei in the, in the image, um, which are a lot easier to use. We also provide panorama images that are created by stitching the individual tiles of the microscope into the big picture. So the raw images that contain the Z layers in TIFF format are quite big, so they are 400 megabyte per tile. And as I said, the flattened and compressed panorama images are a lot smaller than that. The second type of data we deal with is the transcript location, and that is fairly simple. So we provide this information of the decoded transcripts in plain text format. Um, that's, a, that's a flat file that has five columns. One gives you the X, one the Y, and one the Z coordinate in pixels of the panorama image. The transcript identity, that is commonly just the transcript name or the gene the transcript belongs to. And there's also a quality value that gives some information about the reliability of the decoding. So it's not a quantitative measure. Every line is one molecule. Uh, the quality value just gives some information about how sure we are that this transcript is actually correct. The third type of data that we deal with are regions of interest or ROIs. These are basically just paths or shapes um, that can be drawn freehand, that can be deduced from uh, segmentation methods that take into account bright field images or DAPI and several other methods. So there's a wide variety how to generate regions of interest from images. And all of this is accessible because we embed the plugin in the ImageJ environment. So, and the most important uh, part is that we also integrate the region of interest manager and we can import and export regions and the intersect of the transcript. So the cell by gene expression matrix. And our tool also provide a live counting of regions. So the, the expression content of a region is displayed in real time. As I said, we have two different software solutions. One is the ImageJ plugin and one is the website. Both have different advantages. So the ImageJ plugin, as I said, gives access to a wide variety of image manipulation and processing functions, a lot of plugins and well-known um, workflows to work with images, also to work with very large images, including Z-Stacks. The website is more focused on providing easy access to state-of-the-art statistical software packages. Um, we currently run Sura under the hood, so if a cell clustering is done, we actually use Sura to process the data through that. 
uh, we feed back the cluster identity and display the cell colored by the by the cluster identity in the original 3D context. We also have the, the famous uh, dimension reduction plots and we display the UMAP in three dimensions. Um, yes, and it's also easy to display and export gene expression by cluster in typical heat maps. Now I will walk you through the ImageJ plugin at first to get an idea how this is technically done. So first we will open ImageJ and then we will load the Brightfield image and the DAPI image. These two images can be converted into two stacks. One channel will be converted into grayscale and the DAPI channel will be converted into blue. The brightness and the intensity can be adjusted to make the picture look nice. So now we have opened the Resolve Molecular Cartography plugin and the transcript list can be loaded by simply drag and drop the text file into the list box. And then we can select all transcripts. They will initially be colored with default color wheel colors, um, which is not very informative, but we can very quickly see that the vast majority of transcripts is actually inside the cells that we see. And to start exploring the data, we have added a function that will run a co-localization analysis. This will basically provide a score if two transcripts are found near each other. And the scores are treated as a distance matrix and then this, they can be displayed as a heat map. They can also be displayed in a form of a dendrogram. And in this heat map, we can see two clusters of transcripts that obviously co-localize with each other. And these two groups are not found near each other, which is a bit surprising because the sample material we have used here is just HeLa cells. So it's one cell type and we don't expect um, cell type differences. But still we can see there are two clusters of genes that co-localize with each other. Um, so we have found two clusters of genes that co-localize with each other, but avoid the other cluster. In order to visualize what's going on here, we can select the genes that are found to co-localize and provide the same color to the group of transcripts. And then we can select the, the other cluster and we will provide a second color for the transcripts belonging to the second cluster. So we have one cluster in purple and one cluster in green. And we can actually verify the heat map finding um, in the image. It's clearly seen that the green transcripts actually co-localize with each other and the purple transcripts also co-localize with each other, but they seem to avoid. Now we have saved the results and we have a dendrogram and a heat map image file and also the raw locations as comma separated text values to explore the data we have generated further. So now it would be interesting to see what might be the reason for these two different clusterings of transcripts in different cells. And one thing that is striking is that the green transcripts are predominantly found in cells that seem to be 
in cell division. So it's very prominent in cells that are in cell division and the purple transcripts are found in cells that are not dividing or not have not just divided. So an assumption can be that the finding that we have made using the co-localization is not due to different cell types, but due to different cell cycle states of a homogeneous cell culture of HeLa cells. This is an example that's showing how you can draw regions of interest in the tool. It's a freehand tool and the counts on the right side will actually update while we are drawing and encircling the cells. And in this example, we have chosen to encircle two cells each. And there's two cells that are in the middle of the division process, um, two cells that have just divided, obviously. And then there's two cells where we can see no sign of cell division. And we have um, named these regions and we can now export the data um, and the data file will give us a count for every transcript in each of these three regions of interest. Um, the same export will be done uh, if a proper cell segmentation is done with hundreds or thousands of cells. One can also double click transcripts to just highlight one type um, and change quickly from one to the other. Another feature that we demonstrate now is that the transcript locations are actually containing a Z dimension. We can limit the display to certain Z planes and then we can skip through the image and we can see that on the top, for example, the transcripts are only located in the nuclei. If we now go down again, we see first are located in the nuclei and after that the cytoplasm is kind of flat. Now I will walk you through the recognized website to showcase what's possible using our offering. So initially the data to display will be loaded and then the display will be handled by the browser. And similar to the previous case with the HeLa cells, initially the random colors, if displayed all at once, will not provide a lot of information. But which gene is displayed and which color is um, very easy to, to um, customize using this portal. And this sample is actually a section of a mouse brain and um, you can see here different markers selected that are specific for certain neuron, neural uh, cell types or subtypes of neurons. And um, you can pretty clearly see these clusters of transcripts of the same type that are more or less restricted to a certain cell. And you can even see the extensions of the cell. For example, this is a, a neuron where you can see that it's not a total round shape, but it has these axons spreading out. In addition to the display of the mere transcripts, you can also load the regions of interest. As previously shown, this can be freehand drawing. It can come from cell segmentation pipelines using image processing methods using Brightfield or DAPI images. Now we have loaded the regions of interest, the cell boundaries, and we can see that different transcripts are located inside the cells. And the cell content is actually used to cluster cells 
So the cell by gene expression matrix is used to identify cells with similar expression profiles, and these will be clustered into the same dimensional space. So as soon as the clustering result is present, we can see the number of clusters. The colors represent different cluster types. And for each cluster, we have depicted the three most relevant up or down regulated genes. We think this is a great help to identify your cell type of interest because you probably know the marker genes that are highly or lowly expressed. Um, so the initially grayish cells are now displayed in the color that corresponds to the cluster they are grouped into. And uh, this is a three-dimensional plot of the UMAP principal components that has been used that can be displayed alongside the actual tissue representation of the image. And in this UMAP plot, you can now encircle certain regions um, and the corresponding cells that are found in this region will then be highlighted in the tissue um, display. So you can explore the dimensional space, see what cell types are similar or very distinct, and then you can mark these cells in the UMAP plot and see where in the image are these cells located. For example, this little cluster here with this reddish cells is one of the outer layers in the cortex and the neighboring cluster is actually the cells right at the layer boundary. So if you encircle cluster of the human plot, you will directly see the number of cells you have um, marked and which cluster they belong to. Um, and the initial name of the cluster will be the up or down regulated genes, but the name is actually be configurable. If you identify your cell type of interest, you can re replace the up and down regulated gene list by your name. You can write astrocytes or neuron or oligodendrocyte, whatever you think have identified. Um, we have some visual effects. So sometimes two genes, if they have a similar color, they're hard to distinguish um, where is the expression different and where is the expression in the whole overview the same. So we have a function that will group the transcript side by side, um, which helps to differentiate regions of high and low expression and to see where is the structure represented in the expression profile and where is the structure only seen or only demarked by uh, different other transcripts. We have some um, display where the Z dimension is exaggerated so that there's some optical separation of the transcripts and this can now go back to the original original data. So the final step or the final result of the website is actually the gene by cell expression matrix where the cells are grouped by their cluster identity and we have several options to use different color schemes for the heat map so that can suit your favorite uh, way of display high and low expressing genes. Now I would like to wrap up what I have talked about today. So I have presented two different software solutions that help to explore spatial transcriptomics data. And these should serve as tools in the hands of scientists to get most of the data that we will generate. The first tool was the plugin for ImageJ. The advantages are that you can work inside the ImageJ environment, but we have added unique add-ons to that. Um, I have shown the co-localization analysis where the heat map found co-localized genes 
that were unexpected in a homogeneous cell culture, but actually turned out to be markers for a cell cycle. Um, I think it was clear that the work with images um, has an advantage that the morphology can be directly compared to the transcript locations. Um, on the other hand, the website, the strength of the website solution is the statistical package that is easy to use. It's just a click of a button and then the cell by gene expression matrix will be used to cluster the cells into types and um, the identity of the cell clustering can then directly be mapped back to the original cell location without having image data to accompany that. So and the 3D UMAP plot is, uh, is a nice feature to explore the similarity and differences of different clusters and relate the identity or the gene expression types um, to the spatial location of the cells. And one of the results is finally the heat map that uh, quickly provides the information which genes are up or down regulated in which cluster. So with this, I would like to end this talk. I apologize to be not be able to be present in person. So there will be no Q&A session possible with me. Um, but I hope you have still learned a bit and uh, I have succeeded and generate some interest in what we do. And I'm happy to meet you at a different location or occasion. Thank you for your attention and um, take care.